So I'm in the EQS, finally. I've been salivating over other people's videos of this car for some time. And uh, better than just being in the car, I'm in the car with Christoph Starzynski. You must be very pleased with the market response. You know, people are really impressed with the performance, the range. Obviously, the you know CD is now quite extraordinary. It's uh, the world's best. Yes. Um, and I'm talking to you as you reverse, and I know <laughs> that's not fair, really. Although you've got all the good guidance systems, that's all fine. Yeah, and by the way, also a beautiful rear axle steering, which is able to maneuver us here in tight parking spots, especially in the Stuttgart area. Yeah. So this is a big advantage, uh, being able to maneuver this car. Yes. In such a short radius. With, yes. Uh, with our rear axle steering. So that's a big, big, big advantage. And this extraordinary dashboard that just stretches right the way across the entire front of uh, of the vehicle. It's this is again the first time I've, I've I've witnessed this. It's 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 quite extraordinary. And we're we're now in we're in your actual research and development um, top secret really area, aren't we? Of where Absolutely. the development of the cars of tomorrow are going to be coming along, and so on and so forth. Or und so weiter, as I believe you say in Germany. Und so weiter, yeah, no, this is, uh, you're in Sindelfingen um, right now. So this is where the heart of research and development is. Of course, we have also colleagues in Untertürkheim uh, on the powertrain side, but this is here the heart and soul of research and development. Yeah, yeah. Mercedes-Benz cars. Yes. Um, and design, so. Yes. Yes, indeed. You've uh, Mr. Wagoner's office. I think we've just driven yes, past, haven't we? Yes, past Gordon's office. Here. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Gordon Wagoner's office. We've just yes, this is driven the studio. Should, it's not an office. It's, no, a, it's studio, a studio, isn't it? It's of a course, studio it is. one. We have uh, also one in, in China. We have one in the US. We have here one, and we have one in Nizza. So. Yeah. So Christoph, we're in the car. I'm so happy. This is, you know, I, I'm just a little bit taken aback because it is quite, quite a different look of any car I've been in before. But can you tell me a little bit about the choice of battery? Because the car now has extraordinary range. I think you've got some stiff competition coming. We'll see what the official numbers are when they all get checked out from, from Lucid. Not from many people, but from, from Lucid, I believe. But what was your kind of journey in terms of deciding on the type of battery, chemistry, the size of the battery and the packaging? How have you managed the kind of various trade-offs or I don't want to use the word compromises, but trade-offs between driving dynamics, you know, performance, range, size of the battery, et cetera, et cetera. What, can you tell me a little bit about that journey? Yeah, I mean, we, we started um, when we set up the program, we said we want to have the ded dedicated EV platform in the ENS class segment. So, um, giving that promise that the Pinnacle is going to be the S class for EVs, this was our guiding principle. And with that being said, of course, we gave um, ourselves the task. So, how is the electric S class going to be look like? Number one, and number two, um, what are the characteristics of the vehicle? And one characteristic of that was, of course, as you mentioned, or the, the combination of charging, driving, and uh, in that combination, of course, the battery plays a, plays a key role. So we decided to have, uh, not for the S-Class, in the beginning, we decided to have a battery with around 108 kilowatt hours um, usable energy, 107.8 to be correct. And with the chemistry, we said, we want to have the performance of an electric S-Class, but we also want to uh, give this car as a basis uh, the possibility to have a um, long range 
um, traveling character, if you want to say it. So yes. this is how we ended up with 780 uh, kilometers, and according to WFTP, up to <laughs> 780. But I mean, this is only this is only the fundament. Of course, it's an entire package from design. You mentioned the drag coefficient already in the beginning. It's rolling resistance of the tires. It's the HVAC system. So how much energy do you uh, take out of the battery? for auxiliary functions um, so there's a it's a whole package and and that was the basic so this was this was then uh, the the basic for our platform and then we said it has to be scalable because of course we want to go from s-class or eqs suv right. to e-class which is going to be the eqe which had just the debut in in munich a couple of weeks ago yes uh, so yes this is approximately then scaled down to around 90 kilowatt hours Yes, that, that last point you make is was going to be my next question actually. How much can you take from this and put it into the rest of the EQ family? Because yeah, when you're building a luxury car, when you've got a flagship car, obviously in terms of all the different um, challenges you've got or opportunities, it, it is at the top price point. And I guess it's not easy and straightforward to take some of the technology that is, you know, in an S class and just put it in then right the way down the line but that's good to hear that you're going to do that especially I think in terms of charging capability absolutely because one of the things I know when I went to the EQ um, EQC launch that came out was a slight disappointment around the charging proposition and um, I really like the EQC personally in terms of what I, I need I need a dog utility vehicle a DUV because I've got big dogs um, <laughs> And uh, yeah, when I, when I looked at some of the competition that, that was around, there is a bit of variance between not just size of battery, but the speed at which you can charge, what that profile of speeding is, uh, charging, sorry, is. Um, I didn't say speeding because we're on the motorway, by the way. <laughs> I know you're watching, you're watching the speed. Um, but, but yeah, so what you're telling me then is telling us, uh, telling us all is, you're blending and building all of this research and development that's coming into cars like the S-Class and you are going to put them right through the EQ family? Up to the EQE, yes. So the, the platform itself is going to be for the EQS and the EQE. So as I said, we, 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 we are talking now about the, the top ends here of, of Mercedes-Benz cars, which is going to be done from the EQE sedan to the EQS SUV or is also announced already in, in Munich to the Maybach which also is going to be electric so yes so we from the drivetrain we made it fully scalable um, including all the uh, powertrain so the, the, the front and the rear and uh, the charging of course of course yes. that the charging of the EQE is going to be a little bit uh, uh, less than this one here but I think you made a good statement and this is all what people always forget is it's the amount of energy you're putting into a specific time amount which is important for the customer because at the end of the day it's the time he, he or she is spending engine charging station. Yes, yeah, absolutely. No, that, that, that's all good to hear. The other thing, well the immediately thing, and I'm not surprised, is the um, uh, uh, NVH in your cars typically, and I know you've been in charge of quality in the past, haven't you? Yes. Um, the NVH in cars, I know when I went out in the EQC, I was just amazed at how good the NVH was. I could hear myself breathing. And um, I know that's been an aspect of the fit and finish, the materials used, lots of things in terms of how you dampen, you know, any kind of road noise from tires into the body structure, etc. Can you say a little bit about that? I mean, you, you yeah. have as a brand a reputation of fantastic NVH, but you must have more challenges with NVH in an EV because there's no there's no engine vibration or noise. Absolutely, and, and uh, that's why I mean you said it right. It starts with the body. You know, how do we basically dampen the body? Then it starts with the suspension. How do you and and uh, if you want to say engine mounts? How do you decouple this? Um, how do you make sure that, I mean, we've got a big windshield, we've got basically six side windows, if you want to say. You have to make it also from the seals perfectly, that you have an absolutely quiet car, 
um, for the for the passenger so that the passenger can really enjoy a uh, um, smooth ride with no noises so it's a lot a lot of detail work starting from the body to the seals to the to the decoupling uh, of, of power train so it's a huge team effort here we have a brilliant NVH team in uh, at Mercedes and uh, we're basically identifying all sources of um, noises and then we're going for the countermeasures to eliminate them yeah there's, there, there are things that are familiar to me in a Mercedes for example this center console with the switch yeah. to open open the storage area. I quite like this one this it always feels like I'm on a boat you know it's always like being on a nice Italian yeah. you know one of those lovely Italian boats they have in Venice or somewhere like yeah. that but it does glide along nicely and it's almost un unerringly quiet yeah I mean yeah I mean that's I mean Gordon would love that because actually that was that was his also his first purpose, purpose is to, to give you this kind of idea especially with this option here. yeah you know? yeah uh, so this is uh, brilliant um, and it gives you also a little bit the cocooning, you know. You yes, it, it, it does. It it, 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 it nice does feel like, yeah, an, a, an Italian speedboat. Yeah. One, this perhaps, I, I, you may have heard this question before, so forgive me if it's a boring question, but mm -hmm. this is a very big, incredibly impressive dash. Yes. It's also one piece of kit. What happens if someone, you know, cracks that bit there or like scratches that bit there and you know have you not got to replace the whole thing and is that not going to be a bit of an issue in terms of insurance or cost well i mean we're we, we always developing our our parts and, and actually you see here the uh let's take this as an example you know the the the, the crack here you know, yeah it's, and the design yeah here is built by purpose so for example that if you have happen to have an accident from the side which obviously we don't want to have but if you have on this this bends in so you need to oh right i see yeah i can feel so there is a, there, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you see that this is yeah. the, 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 this gap here is designed by purpose here sure you know yeah so that you that you don't have the impact on the whole screen i've got it okay so i see so it protects a on the, uh, the 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 passengers and b also of course the part because it just it has a it, i would call it it has a natural Breaking lines. Yeah. To say, yeah. Okay. You know? So we're we're pretty we're 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 thinking in in our in our safety department we're really thinking the things through. You know. Mm. You have been building cars for a while, haven't you? You <laughs> yes, do. Yes. You have learned a few things yeah. along the way. Yeah. Yeah. So so the the car's been. Let me think. How long's the car been out now? Not that long. Three months. Six months. Something yeah, like I that. Yeah. I mean, uh, we we started actually to real. Uh, Call it real customers. I mean, we had press drives and everything, but mm. we started in Europe end of September, and uh, basically Germany. And now Europe is uh, rolling out, and uh, the first ships just arrived in the U.S. And um, we're also on the way for the beginning of next year to China. So mm. basically, the, the 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 ball is rolling now, and. Uh, the next one will come the eq will then come um, next year so sure you will sure. see more and more hopefully customers now in our beautiful vehicles yeah well um i don't know if you managed to to watch it but i made a film with some of your guys in in um in the uk uh at the formula one team at, at the because i live in brackley by the way okay. uh, which is quite useful because yeah you know you, you guys are there and I also went up to Brixworth I also talked to someone you will know Paddy Lowe who I know used to be part of the F1 team he's not he's not now he's doing something else quite cool and interesting I think um, and then my friend Mark Preston from the Formula E team because um, I wanted to talk about Formula One or motorsport in the electric age so have you been developing anything in here whether it's about energy management whether it's about harvesting energy particularly you know I'm thinking of curves obviously um, has there been crossover technology from what happens in Brixworth and maybe some of the Formula One stuff into this car Christoph um, the, 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 uh, there is always an, an, an exchange between us and Brixworth um, mainly it started on the, on the hybrid side you know, mm -hmm. with, this was the uh, 
this the beginning and you will uh, also have to stay a little bit tuned but uh, we will have the EQXX where we will tell a little bit more about yeah, that story. Yeah, I'm very interested in that. Um, but yes, there is, a, there is an exchange now again, of course, uh, Louis and Battery have a different, let's say, customer needs than, than we have. <laughs> yeah, just a bit. <laughs> uh, but of course, the exchange and the learning, you know, um, within the company is there. Now, if you if you talk about specific uh, battery management system, no, I mean it's complete. As I said, because the, the use case. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. Both, yeah. For both yeah. Yeah. Lewis Lewis needs a few different things. Yeah. Exactly. He's, he definitely needs twelve points as well. If you can find him that at the moment. Yeah, he's uh, again. Yeah, he has a battery. Uh, battery uh, basically uh, d different driving behaviors, <laughs> different uh, use cases, but the overall exchange within the yeah. company is there. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what, one thing I would love to talk about, but I'm not actually going to, because I know it's not your area of specialization and expertise, but electric buses and electric trucks, etc. I, I really believe in those passionately being the things to help, particularly air quality in towns and cities. And I've always believed that that's, you could argue, equally important or pretty much as important as CO2, um, but, but we won't get into all of that. Um, but take a van, for example. Uh, uh, I see lots of delivery vans for Amazon now that are mm. Mercedes Sprinter. So I know this isn't, you know, we're in the, your S class, yeah. we're in the top of the range passenger car, but anything happening that's transferring into those sort of vehicles? Yeah, absolutely. We have, we have, a, we have a, uh, especially on the e drive side, but also on, on interior, uh, exterior, we have a big, big exchange between the two development groups. Uh, so that we are learning from each other and of course that we are we are also uh, sharing best practices and yep. technology so yep. yes on the van side definitely you know, a lot of exchange and it's not only the uh, the, the sprinters which you mentioned but also the uh, the the EQV is currently in the market in Spain. right yeah actually, yeah you also very, Geneva. very successful yes, yeah you two, year, two years ago I remember yeah. I was there yeah yeah, it's yeah very successful you see uh, I think you see them already driving around here now. yeah um, so it's a it's a very very nice uh, vehicle, you know. Yes. Well, I was tempted by that. I mean, I've only ever really had cars for S, I suppose SUVs. I mentioned I've got big dogs, and um, because you don't have a station wagon, um, uh, and I, I'm kind of well. Here's a question then. So you're electrifying the whole range. You're you're mm -hmm. going all in. It's been declared, and you're bringing it forward again. This is all good news. When can I get in an estate car or shooting brake that, that's that's electric? Because my dogs are asking this question, <laughs> Christoph. <laughs> I, um, you, you have to try out. Maybe a dog will also like our huge trunk here with 600, uh, more than 600 liters. Yeah, but, I'm definitely going to have a look. Yeah, yeah but, but I mean, uh, to, the, to that point, uh, the important thing is for us, we have a uh, uh, platform now which is fully scalable. And if the market demand is there, you know, mm. because... Station wagons usually are a very European thing. It's yeah. not that much in, uh, in Asia and it's also not that much in the US where you're going, going basically more for SUVs. So also there, I mean, the customer will determine um, also the, the variety of our, our models, of course. If mm, there is a strong mm. market demand for something and it's also paying into our overall strategy of um, being uh, very very rentable I mean um, making at the end of the day very very good money um, then yes but mm. again you have to see that that this is currently at least what we have right now we don't have it is it a, is it uh, uh, impossible to do it on a platform no because the platform is there so yes you, so it's just a matter of market demand yeah you know? well, well on that market demand and as an engineer I'm sure you know this I, I don't um, would a station wagon in a state car version of a saloon typically be less weight than an SUV? Because obviously the market demand, as you say, you've got to go with the market, but we've become, it seems to me, just totally fixated on SUVs. You know, I'm of an age where we, there was a world before SUV. It was called the estate car world. And are estate cars typically lighter and easier to engineer? if you like, in terms of, and then maybe deliver, well, certainly better range, because you've got better aerodynamics. If you've got a lower car, like a saloon car with an estate at the back, 
surely that's a better proposition for an EV than a big SUV. From from the from the uh, drag coefficient. Yes. Uh, yes. I mean, I think there is there is no doubt. Um, weight, uh, weight, depending on of course uh, the material mix you're using, depending the size of the battery. Yes, of course you also have a little bit of weight advantage in a in a, uh, a state. Mm. But in this case, again, um, you have to invest into into this platform then you have to develop it and uh, you have to uh, um, get the return on invest on it of so, course so the yeah, question yeah, is course. really yeah the question is really where is the market demand? yeah the economic you economic yeah, where yeah. Is the market market demand yeah. for this I, I understand it from the engineering perspective you purely look on on engineering factors still if you if you I can't tell you much Oh, I cannot unveil, of course, the EQS SUV or the EQE SUV, but you're gonna be. You have to be sure of, that we, of course, are making sure that you will have an SUV interior feeling like you are used to have it from the GLE or GLS. Yeah. But we will also um, keep on pushing and fighting, of course, together with our aerodynamic colleagues, to make this car as sleek as possible so that we use the energy which is installed in this vehicle the yes. most efficient way yeah? yes so that's that's the challenge for us actually yeah for my team um, together with our aerodynamics colleagues yeah but you've got me thinking actually christoph i'm thinking i need to talk to a few of my friends who like robert llewellyn and fully charged and a few other people maybe we need to start influencing well in, maybe that's not the right word but suggesting to to eco warriors that they look at asking for estate cars rather than SUVs <laughs> maybe this world fashion of SUV as is okay but when we put it in the context of better aerodynamics better efficiency getting more out of a battery maybe we need to just remind people the younger people who perhaps don't remember them so much that estate cars are where they we used to be and then along came this SUV thing um, because I could get the dogs in a nice estate car, in a nice, you know, in a nice box. That would that would work. It doesn't have to be an SUV. No, but I'm I'm sure again. I mean, we can we can uh, obviously the weather is now turning a little bit to a disadvantage, but I'm sure you will your dog will like <laughs> the uh, the uh, the trunk here as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because it's not the classic free box limousine, um, and uh, yeah. In, in the opinion of uh, of that again also yes uh, when we talk about uh, the, the whole the whole circular economy and everything and also yeah, the whole package, of, package yeah. of course it's also uh, of course uh, it does it's not said that that we will not have a very uh, uh, good um, SUVs you know mm. we will have them I mean you, you you can look on on material renewable materials everything which is paying into that that whole package is going to be utilized for us mm, yeah. mm. so um, again customer demands are there for obviously this beautiful vehicle for sedans for SUVs and and if the demand is there also around the globe for for estates um, yeah for state, yeah then yeah we will be the last not to to, to do something I mean, <laughs> we've got very successful E and C classes yeah um, so it's hybrids well, well uh, let me tell you something many years ago and i know i'm supposed to be i am an electric vehicle guy however in the past there weren't electric vehicles that you could really buy um little niche ones here somewhere or another but one of the cars that i know my family loved having more than anything else was an e320 cdi mm -hmm. uh, because the build quality the size the shape it was incredibly practical and a very very nice car um so i suppose in a way partly my age i guess um, that thing of being attached to estate cars is, is is kind of there. But you mentioning how big the boot is in the back here. Yes. I think I might be wrong. You're trying to sell me this car, aren't you? <laughs> no, I'm, I you mean, should be. You know. I should be, of course. Yeah. And, and I'm very, very. Oh, not only me, but the entire team is very proud of the entire package. You know, I mean, the legroom in the rear and also. Yeah. Uh, uh, the lid, the, the trunk there is yes. huge. So. 
we, we think we have a very, very uh, yeah. good well, pitch here. Well, Christoph, our cameraman, is sat in the back there. He's like, he's got the luxury of being in, the only person in the back. And I'm just looking. I'm going to try that out in a bit myself for size. But yeah, I mean, it, there is a lot of room in, in this car, isn't there? Yeah. Because, and then, then the big boot. Yeah, because we, we, we took the advantage of uh, having um, our battery size and we utilized from a packaging perspective, the maximum what we could get. Um, obviously, we don't have to have a long hood in front because we only have to put in yeah. an electric engine. So you've got a long stance of three meters and 21. And this is contributing to your uh, leg room and to his yes. leg room. And then in the, in the back yes. of the design, We've created uh, a huge uh, trunk, and basically, if he would not be sitting in there, you could also fold the seats, and then yes. even more space. So I think we can we can uh, adapt to your wishes here with this vehicle yeah. already. He's definitely trying to sell me one. I can tell. <laughs> You've worked in buying, you've worked in quality control, you've worked in all these different things. What is your feeling now about this decade we're in, the 2020s, this, well, let's be honest, probably the most dramatic decade of your career and, and, and mine in the auto industry. What do you think? So let's let's say it's 2031. Um, what is Mr. Starzynski driving in 2031? If you're let's say you're still at the company, 2031. Are you driving a car at all, or is a robot driving you? What 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 do you think is going to be the world of twenty thirty one? I mean, if I if I look at myself personally, I mean, I'm definitely going to be driving in a Mercedes EQ or hopefully an EQS um, in uh, in ten years from now. Probably not this one anymore, but the next generation. Uh, and yes, I, I think the, the, the amount of autonomous driving will, will grow, so I think I will be able to pick both, either um, let the car drive, like actually we will start um, with the S-Class and then next year with this one on a level 3 level, and, um, but I will also, I think I'm still someone who also is uh, loves uh, being him behind the steering wheel so i personally if i can make a wish i will have both worlds the, the best leisure, of both worlds the leisure of being driven and the ability to drive in this beautiful vehicle or the successor of this beautiful vehicle very nice it reminds me of um, new england you know outside of boston and yeah also with, with the uh with the leaves now and everything you see the trees are beautiful in the sun now and actually it's also a good a good route to, to show you the ability of the vehicle because it has some sharper turns now yeah and I'm driving so tell me a little bit about the steering setup then because you've got a very different dynamic in the rear steer haven't you how does that work well i mean it was uh, um the purpose of the rear steering is actually that you realize that you have one as we mentioned in the parking lot yep but also that you actually that you in a way that you don't feel it being synthetic so that was the biggest challenge for the team you know to adopt the front and the rear seating in a perfect way so that gives you agility and stability you know so yes. so this is but it's it's and where does that engage does it engage only at lower speeds no or? it's actually i mean depending on depending on uh, what kind of option package you have. But, uh, for example, in this one where we have the 10 degree rear axle steering, you have the city agility, you know, so it, mm -hmm. the, the amount of movement, of course, of the rear steering is 
going down with higher speeds so you've got the full 10 degree uh, when you're basically in a parking lot where like we we were when we are basically uh, driving out of Sindelfingen and at the plant and then on the autobahn it goes it goes down to a to a dynamic and stability factor yes so it, it, it moves it, it has different angles with different um, speed mm -hmm. Now, something I'm interested in terms of the characteristics of a car driving. Obviously, I'm going to have a drive at some point. Yes. I'm looking forward to that very much. In China, a lot of luxury cars, high-end cars, aren't driven by the owner. They're driven by a professional driver. How do you manage building a car for the world, for the global market, where you've got to try and consider that, that, that variable between an individual who buys it to own and drive it and an individual who buys it and has has their own driver mm -hmm. is, is that a challenge or, or how does how did that work into your thinking and, and the development of the vehicle same here it's all about comfort seating comfort space roominess um, so independent now if you sit here or if you sit in the back um, it has to be on that level of vehicle it has to be the same convenience you know? yes yeah. so um, we, we, we were much focusing uh, together with our colleagues also on, besides the space, also on the seating comfort. In this vehicle, uh, you have actually seats which you can put in a different angle in the rear. Mm. Um, so that's a, that's, that's a big focus to basically uh, serve um, all customer needs. Mm. Depend, independent of you sit here, here. Yeah, or in the you don't want them too comfortable, to be honest with you, Christopher. You might fall asleep. <laughs> I mean, I've had—I'll be honest with you—I've had two pretty heavy days <laughs> of um, focusing on a whole load of EV stuff. We've had the Green Auto Summit in Stuttgart, and um, and now I'm sat here thinking, this is—you know—it's a privilege and great to be with you. And but I'm thinking, I'm getting very comfortable now, and uh, <laughs> and then that's the whole to, purpose. I mean, you should, and, and if you drive it, also long distance. I mean. You, you have look you, you don't have any noises anymore you should feel very very relaxed when you exit this vehicle independent now where you sit um, and uh, obviously the driver we're doing everything that the driver has a relaxed driving but is very focused with a lot of um, systems here yeah I'm just from moving the, the seat around it's very easy it's just yeah. just obviously from the s class yeah um, with a head-up display, you will uh, enjoy it in a second. Um, actually, we haven't turned on the music, of course, but you can use the massage functions. So there are a lot of functions which make your life very comfortable in this vehicle. Yeah. And uh, there are also a lot of assistance systems here, Th which are helping you uh, in in every every uh, situation. You know. Yeah. Let's be honest, this is a car for people who really, really get spoiled in life, isn't it? You know, we, we have to make something for everybody. We have to focus on mass volume stuff. We have to have good electric buses, delivery vans, all of this stuff. But there are people for a variety of reasons in their life who ha are in a position to enjoy a car like this. And my goodness, do they get spoiled when they, when they have all this it's like you know every brand's got to have aspirational you know vehicles in it hasn't it of course it has you might and we might we were talking about porsche taycan yesterday and some other vehicles you might never own one of those cars but a aspiration to it is a good thing because it helps people you know strive for all sorts of things in their life um so i i don't i'm not uncomfortable with with luxury as aspiration I don't think it's incongruous with where we're trying to go with you know the challenges of climate change and many other things there has always been a world in which oops there's that's just my GoPro falling off that's not your car um, you know luxury fits in and I guess and this is going to be a question then uh, like we were saying earlier a lot of what you've put into this car yes as your kind of halo product is now filtering into many of the other vehicles and, and that's the point of it that, that having a market for this enables you to spend the R&D budgets and do the other things to, to filter it down isn't it yeah and, and it follows the, the strategy which we have always followed I mean if you look back our 
technology leader was always the S-Class and it's always the S-Class and then it goes down to the other models you know of course in, 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 in adapting it um, but we are always using our S-Class as the technology, the technology mm. leader for new technologies mm. um, and with that being said I mean a lot I'm sure you've you mentioned the EQC, um, EQA, EQB. Uh, yes, there is no hyper screen, but you have, for example, there with our MBUX a beautiful screen, a very intelligent screen also, helping you in every day driving uh, with no range anxiety, with Mercedes B charge. So there, there is always there's a blitzer, where there is always. Mm. Uh, <laughs> um, something which you will also find components of that already in our EQA, EQB and EQC mm -hmm. especially when it comes to UX and UI you mentioned the, the, the NVH level and then EQC I don't know if you have the opportunity to drive the EQA or EQB but not yet, not yet yeah, the, I hope same, so. the same in there so there are always components which we are bringing uh, to all of our vehicles yeah, yeah can I ask you maybe an awkward question, but the, the strategic focus for everybody on electric vehicles, of course, is massively around the battery at the moment. Massively around the battery in terms of building gigafactories, getting the best range possible, etc., etc. But, but with all your knowledge and experience, do you think that over time, as the charging infrastructures get better and better, we can then take away some of that focus on the battery? And, and if you know, in other words, put the range into the infrastructure and the confidence rather than it all being about the battery on every single car. Is I think, I think uh, it's, it's always also depending on uh, the segment. You know, I mean, uh, look, look at today, if you, if you look on the, on the uh, ICE cars, you won't find an 80 liter gas tank in an A class. Yes? Mm. You, you just don't find it. Okay, yeah, um, yeah, sure. Yeah. So the same thing here is I think you have to you have to have a range which is equivalent to what the customer demand is in that segment. And this will stay. Um, and the range anxiety of course with having more charging stations will disappear, but I think still that you will have in every segment a bar, bar where you say this is the one where the customer is just expecting a range yeah yeah, yeah so so to your point um, with the battery the battery will always be important because there is more to that than range it is it has a factor of cost it has a factor of source of origin yes it has a factor of charging performance so the battery is obviously always going to be the heart of uh, the EV vehicle, but it's not not the only one determining uh, the the the, the, uh, the system. Yeah, sure, sure. No, I, I I'm I'm kind of with you. I suppose in a way, I'm hoping that we can be less reliant on the battery because that takes up you know natural resources. Yeah. And if if in a way we can just improve that charging experience a lot because it needs to improve a lot. Um, you know, on and off, I've driven EVs since 2007, and really, I still have challenges with it. I've chosen not to, for a variety of reasons, to buy a Tesla or, or you know, acquire a Tesla. I had one briefly, and yeah, for sure, the charging experience is better. But we are we are seeing that move very quickly now. We're seeing, you know, charging stations in the UK. We've got one actually, Christoph, which is really cool, called GridServe. And it looks like a petrol station, but it's all got solar panels on the roof and it's got 35 fast chargers. You think you're in a petrol station, you're not. It's only EV. And, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing lots of those because I think then, especially on the, auto, on the motorway like we've just been, I think when you come off and you're having that experience, everybody's familiar with it. You know, fast charging, that's all good. Reliable charging, and absolutely. And uh, that, that, that will be cool. Yeah, one last sorry sorry yeah, go on. just a bit i think yeah. um the, the the battery size as i said is is, is going to be um, probably uh, depending again on the segment and how fast the battery technology uh, de 
develops. Plus, of course, we're also doing everything from our side uh, to reduce uh, the resource. Which, which we have to put in there. So you, yes. see, you see the chemistry growing. So yes. I, I think there is, we're just in the beginning of a dynamic and, and good competition where everyone is taking into account all, all factors, not only range, but everything. Um, so so that, that, that we are basically, we, we haven't uh, uh, developed the mo our, our first engine uh, 135 plus years ago was not as efficient as it is right now. So you will, <laughs> no, you will, you will have the same development. Yeah. Just imagine how how quickly the technology is, is developing now. So uh, yeah. I'm very very optimistic that we will see huge yeah. jumps in the next couple of years. Well, you're, you're doing like not everybody, but quite a few people placing your bets on a number of different places on the table, aren't you? You know, solid state batteries, mm -hmm. that's obviously a bet. You know, there's a there's a bunch of these things where no one actually knows within the time frame exactly where we'll be, but if you if you hedge your bets, you know, put some chips on this one and this one, it's not a bad idea. No, we have, we have uh, I mentioned it to you earlier um, in our discussion, we, we have actually uh, development centers in, in Palo Alto, we have one in China. So we are watching everything very closely with a lot of partnerships, um, exactly to the point that we say, okay, what's what's the next what's the next thing? Because obviously we want to be number one, we want to be leader in electric drive and, and that's yeah. why you have to be on your toes and really watch out what's going what's going out there and be first to the market. Then. Yes. But on that point then this is a quick question. I don't want to go through it in detail for a number of reasons, but when it comes to batteries and it comes to electric vehicles and charging, we're seeing the re-emergence of battery swapping. Neo are bringing that into the market in a big way. Geely, I think. A um, few interesting things happening there. Um, and we're seeing some people going with wireless charging. When you say the next big thing, do you think possibly either battery swapping or wireless charging might be a significant component? I'm not that sure about battery swapping. Uh, I think this is more a strategic decision um, which you can, which you have to take as a company. I mean, we're, we're yeah. definitely, we're happy with what we have right now here. Yes. Um, on on the charging, if it's wireless charging or on other, other charging, uh, we are watching, of course, the market and the technical uh, competitiveness they're very very closely um, it has to bring an advantage just to be wireless for example um, it really has to bring an advantage to the customer yeah which at the end of the day means okay um, and at the right is, price at least. the right price yeah. but also how is your ratio of um, energy giving from the pet to the vehicle you know and that that's yeah. always uh, that's always the challenge again it's 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 yeah also in charging we will see charging we, we have to increase uh, the speed all together we're in in having charging infrastructure and we're pushing very hard on that we're together with unity as well here um, but also the technology will grow um, yes and yes so, i mean the dream version is charging like fueling you know when yeah. it comes to time convenience and everything I'd like to talk to you about wireless charging, but oh, it's so nice and smooth. It's like uh, I've never driven a Rolls Royce, but I think this is what it would be a little bit like. <laughs> it's nice. I like the heads-up display as well. I'm looking. Yeah. I'm looking at my speed limit is 50. Yeah, nice, easy pickup. So now you see, you don't have to hit the brake. It's going to automatically. Sees the car in front of him. You don't have to do anything. You really? Have to, yeah, just have to. Are you sure? Yes, you have to trust the car. Just trust the car. Trust the, trust the car. Okay. It's difficult. <laughs> I know, but it basically yeah. it uses the radar sensors. Yeah, yeah sure, camera. yeah. So, uh, but I just had that little moment, not doubting you, but I'm thinking, <laughs> so if I smash into this car in front and then they go back and say, Mr. Kalenia says, well, what did he think? Yeah, nice, but he's smashed it into another car. <laughs> <laughs> no. And oh, yeah, you, that's a weird feeling. Yeah, but you can, you can, I mean, if you, for example, the classic one pedal feeling, you just have to pull, yeah. uh, pull on the left side of the pedal. 
and right. then you you will go uh, no no uh, here 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 yes here, yes here. and then you will have let's say the classic one here. nice break so you wanted to give that a test yeah it's good yeah and no nothing there that i think ooh. Yeah, I mean, let's be honest, there's a lot of systems on this. There's a lot of, you know, I guess dual systems, counters, you know, it's all there yeah. to give you the best safety. Yeah, I mean, I mean we I like that actually pretty much because sometimes, yeah. you know, depending on where the, uh, where the traffic light is, you know, yeah. it's hard to see. So with the light coming in, you really have, you really enjoy the 580, right? <laughs> <laughs> This is, this is a beautiful part. It's so close to uh, your factory, all that big, you know, yep. industrial stuff. And then here you are, you know, 10, 15 minutes later, you're in the beautiful countryside. This is, this is, uh, I need to watch my speed. Yes. The Schwarzwald starts. Yeah. It's in the Black Forest. It's a beautiful area. Right. We are in the middle of a transformation, of course, also for our companies. And we were taking our our employees on that on that journey all together. You know? yeah. So we are transforming into that. It's not happening overnight. It's a process. But as you mentioned, we are taking our entire team with, with us yeah. because we have a strong brand, and a strong brand is built on strong good people. Mm. So we want to. This is this is as important as the technology are the people who are working yeah. for this company. And there is a lot of pride working for Mercedes here, also around the globe. Mm. And we, we will take this, this team with us on that transformation. Mm. It's happening in Sittlingen, it's happening in our powertrain plants and in the Türkei in Berlin. And, and, and so it's happening around the globe. And there is a big, big commitment from our side to take the, the team on this transformation mm. uh, uh, with addition and also educational stuff. Mm. Well, you say it like that, and I'm glad to hear you say that, but of course it isn't easy. You know, the, 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 this is a big, well-established machine, like, you know, several other major players, and, and uh, you know, it needs that leadership, it needs that vision, and then and then it needs the, you know, what we were talking about earlier on, it needs people, you know, needs the execution. Absolutely. You know, so what if you've got this phrase or that ambition or this number, you need the right people to, to bring it all together for you, don't you? Yeah, I mean, you, you, you have to, I think there is an English impression or uh, walk the talk. I mean, you, yeah. you have to, you have to lead by example, you have to walk the talk, you have to, you have to set the example and then you have to um, show uh, not only on paper, but in a day-to-day -day life, um, working life, that, that you take this serious altogether. And I mean, you can see that in our organization, you know. Yes. And the people at the team, actually, they, they are, I mean, they, everyone is very excited. Look, in several things, and I mean, you have to see how much in the eyes of the, the, the team when the cars are arriving. So there is a lot of pride yeah, yeah. which they take. Uh, being able to build this vehicle, if it's in Sinnelfing and in Bremen, uh, in Beijing, in Tuscaloosa, it's a, there is a lot of pride which they take in, in, in being a part of this transformation story. Yes, and, and we spoke earlier, and, and I think this is, I want to say this for people to hear it, that, that when you work in a company that's its whole existence and for most of its life has been about internal combustion, and now we're in this shift, the shift is real. You are doing it with absolute genuine passion because you're all fathers and mothers and you've got children and grandchildren, etc. You know, you of course you care and are as fully aware of climate change and all the other things as, as people that aren't in this sort of industry. And um, and therefore, you know, I am confident that what is happening in the auto industry now around the world, some places better than others, is genuine, is real and we'll have that gathering momentum because you've got kids and grandkids. Of course you care about the future. I mean, I'm right, aren't I? I'm not sure, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's our responsibility. Um, the leadership, if I stay with Mercedes, the leadership of this company and the entire company, yeah. uh, we have a responsibility and we're taking that very, very serious. Um, and again, this is happening for the entire company now. Yeah. Christoph, what do you mean if you stay in this company? You've been here 30 years. It's it's your life. It's 20 years, but it's my life. Oh, 20 Actually, years. Yeah, Sorry, 20, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I, yeah, and 
Yeah, you've, it looks like you've done 30 years worth in yep. 20 years, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, the last couple of years we had a little bit more, gained a little bit more grey hair, probably a little bit more weight, <laughs> but uh, it paid out with the vehicle, so. Yeah. I'm going to say well done, my friend. Thank you very much. Nice piece of work. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. yeah lovely. Yeah, thank you. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed it as well. Yeah, great. Thank you.